Hello, in this video, we're going to show you how to create a Khan Academy style drop down navigation menu. So, switch over, let's go to Khan Academy, and this is what we mean. So, we've got this navigation bar at the top, which is pretty nice and responsive. Click subjects, we get a list of all the subjects in nice categories. But if we start resizing our browser, the subjects are there. But if I refresh, and as you can see, the subjects menu isn't clicked, it isn't dropped down, it isn't open, but it automatically is open on smaller screen sizes. So that's what we want to replicate. Have a drop down menu which automatically just appears on the smaller screen sizes, so it's a better experience. So, first of all, I want to say I'm going to be using Bootstrap for this tutorial. And it'll be version 4 alpha 5 if you're using pretty much any version of version 4 version 3 code will for the most part be the same minus a few changes if you know bootstrap chances are you probably do or some other responsive framework like skeleton.css w3.css foundation or anything along those lines you should be all good and you should be able to adapt the code accordingly and there'll be a link in the description to the github page to the source code so first of all what we want to do is set up a quick little project so what I'm going to do I've got the opening brackets fantastic little ID very lightweight and really functional so I'm going to do new file index.html I'm going to have two other files index.css which is going to be the style sheet and index.js which is the JavaScript file so in the HTML file what we're going to do is go to getbootstrap.com. Again, if you're using different version of Bootstrap or a totally different responsive framework, you should be able to adapt it as long as you know the different components of that framework. So I'm going to go to components. Actually, no, I want to go back. I'm going to go to start a template. This is always a good place to start. Copy that, paste it, and I'm going to right click, click beautify. So it just Format the code to the way I like it, or for the most part, the way I like it. And now let's just see our result. So I'm going to open up our website. So this is what we got. Let's just right click, make sure there's no warnings, errors, or anything like that in the console. No, it looks all good. Now, what we're going to do is if we go to the components section, there's only one thing we want from here, and that is the nav bar. If we scroll down, we could get this one, but this isn't collapsible. We want a collapsible one, which shows the burger button when you resize it to a small screen. So we want this code here. Then I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go to the index file, index.html, I should say. Get rid of the h1 tags, paste the code here. I'm going to do the same again where I'm going to right click beautify and I'm going to indent it, save that, refresh. As you can see, we have a responsive drop um, navigation menu now. So if I click drop down, we have this drop down. So this is what is going to essentially turn into this. I know it doesn't look like much at the moment, but don't worry, it will. Though the drop down button is here, it could be here, 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 doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we're not really talking about, you know, having this particular logo here, having a sign in button here, having a donate button here, having a search button here, or having this sort of coloring. We just want to essentially get this style of drop down, which allows us to resize our browser and it shows the subjects like so. So that's essentially what we want to achieve today. So what we want to do is, first of all, if you go to your code, to the drop down list item, just get rid of the div inside here. Because we're going to be putting it outside of this. So if you get rid of this bad boy, there are a few sort of changes that we want to make in here. So first of all, for the list item, aka the drop down list item, we want to add an ID of drop down button li. We'll be adding the code for this in the CSS style sheet very, very soon. And for this, instead of an ID of responsive navbar drop down, which is there by default, 
going to add our own, which is going to be drop down button. Save that. And now if you were to go back, refresh, the only difference is you can't open our menu anymore. So what we're going to do is outside of the nav bar, I'm actually going to add a few bunch of empty lines here so I can easily scroll up and down so it's easier for you to see. I'm going to add a div and this is going to have a class of container dash fluid. Let me zoom in a bit. And this just is a bootstrap class which spans the full width of the browser. And this is also going to have an ID of drop down menu, which we'll be using ourselves. We're going to have a div inside of that, which is going to be, have an ID of inner drop down. Now we're going to have another div, which is going to have a class of row. And the distinction between these two divs is going to be this. The container-fluid div, which spans the width of the web browser, which this will essentially contain the padding and the background color of, I mean, the background color and the border, which will, the border will appear at the top so we can distinguish between the drop-down menu and the navigation menu and the background color will just span the entire width of the browser as you can see with Khan Academy though the content ends here the actual color goes all the way to the edge and if you had bigger screen sizes or like screens with more pixels on there with a higher resolution then you'll see this in that it will be even more apparent so if we go back to this and the inner drop down will be used to make it smaller and center it. And the row is something that's built into Bootstrap and there'll be something similar in Foundation etc. So within here we can start adding our columns which is gonna have a class of what we're gonna put is coal-lg-free coal-fm-fix which just means span three columns on a large screen and six columns on a small screen and by default if you don't specify Anything that's extra small will span 12 columns and it's out of 12, yeah, yeah, it's out of 12 columns. And this is all bootstrap related. Again, there'll be similar methods and classes for the different frameworks. And in here, we're going to try and essentially make it look like the Khan Academy one. It doesn't matter in what these like buttons or text items of text do we're not going to make them clickable but again that's not the point of this it's the point of this is to get the drop down looking the same and you can do whatever you want you can put images here you can put text that links to somewhere whatever you want we're going to put a div and we're actually going to need a bunch of divs so what i'm going to do is copy and paste this a few times that should be enough and we're going to just put early math. Again, we're just trying to replicate sort of what it looks like arithmetic on Khan Academy, algebra, al algebra, geometry, trigonometry. I'm just going to put stats instead of statistics and probability, which is what it says on the website. Let's keep it simple. Calculus, differential equations, linear algebra, and the final one is math. Math for fun and glory let's just bring this up to good standard so um okay, semicolon and that is it so let's just get rid of that refresh our web browser and see what we get so this is essentially our drop down this is what will appear when we click this at the moment it's always visible and what we're going to do is actually duplicate 
the column code inside here you probably have different items different text different amounts of text but we're gonna just again accelerate the process by just having it like this as you can see we're sort of getting the structure that this navigation menu has so now we're actually pretty much done for the html file there's only two things left we need to link the style sheet and link the javascript file so i'm going to put link relationship is style sheet href of index.css and if we scroll down we need to link the javascript file and to do that very simple stuff you probably already know probably done it before me script source index.js i'll save that and now if we go to our index.css i'm going to put hash drop down menu and what we want to do for this is essentially apply the background color and the border which is going to be background again let me zoom in background color and I'm going to apply EC, 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 which is essentially sort of a slightly different gray, but you could have web color you want. Now I'm going to apply the border, which is going to be border dash top dash color. For this, I'm going to put 0000, which is black. I'm going to put border dash top dash style. You could put whatever border you want. You don't have to put a border, but I'm going to. And finally, border dash top dash width, which is going to be one pixel. And now, what we're going to actually, uh, let me show you the result. If I refresh, as you can see, we will get into sort of what this is looking like. And now, what we're going to do is now do hashtag nav bar responses. Now we're going to set a max width for our navigation bar and a margin right and left of auto, which will center the navigation bar. So we're going to put max dash, dash width, 1600 pixels, margin dash left is auto, margin dash right is also auto. If we go back, refresh, you don't see any difference because the width of this screen is 1280 whereas we've got a max width of 1600 pixels but if you if you had a browser that was on a screen that was above 1600 pixels on the browser was above 1600 pixels the navigation bar would only span 1600 pixels and will be centered in the middle and to replicate that we'll set this to 1024 refresh and as you can see it's resized and it's now in the middle i'll keep it at this for now i'll switch it yeah actually i'll keep it like this because you can modify these values however you want in the github source code it's 1600 pixels again doesn't matter what these values are as long as you're consistent and now we also need to do the same for this drop down menu you could have it bigger than the navigation bar but that doesn't look very good and that's not the way that Khan Academy's done it. To do that, very simple. All we need is to put comma, hashtag, in a drop down. And now, if we go back, refresh, as you can see, this is centered along with it. Now, what we need to do is affect the row within the inner drop down. And what we're going to do is just add some padding to the top and bottom so it looks more like this otherwise it's a little too close to the edge and it doesn't look very appealing so what we're going to do is put hash in a drop down greater than dot row which means the first row within the element with id of in a drop down apply this code which is padding dash top of 20 pixels copy and paste that we want to do the same for bottom 
Now if we go back, refresh, as you can see it looks a little better now. And now what we want to do is put a media query so we hide the navigation drop down bar when it's above a certain size. And for us that's 992 pixels. It will depend on your like framework, what you've got it set as, and what you want it to, you know trigger between what the actual trigger value is. For us it's 992 pixels, but that's dependent on well, you. 992 pixels is in here. We're gonna put hash, drop down, menu, display, none. And now what we're gonna do is go back. As you can see, it's no longer here, but if I Resize it to a lower screen size, it is now there. And if I resize it even lower, it appears on top of each other, which is pretty darn cool. So now, there's actually one more piece of code to go in the CSS, but we'll show you that towards the end. So if you go to our JavaScript file, what you wanna do is put, let me zoom in as usual, var, drop down menu id equals dollar as you can tell we're going to use jquery it's automatically included as a part of the starter code drop down menu we'll be using this quite a bit first of all we're going to do dollar document this is basic jquery stuff if you want to learn more about JavaScript, jQuery, feel free. We've got playlists on both of them, including HTML and CSS. And so when it's ready, we're going to call this function. And what we're going to do is detect when the drop down button has been clicked when it has been we're going to run a method and our method is going to be checking if none is equal to the drop down menu id dot css and what we're going to be getting is the display property and if it's none, that means it's not visible. And therefore, we need to do drop down menu.id.show. If this isn't the case, then that means it is visible. And what we want to do is drop down menu.id.hide. And now that's it for this bit of JavaScript. There is a bit more that we want to add. We'll show you that in a second. If I refresh, I click the drop down as you can see we can hide it and show it like so and but another thing is if I have the drop down open if I click within the drop down the drop down doesn't close if I click outside of it it does close watch what happens with ours if I click outside of it doesn't do anything inside of it well, obviously it doesn't shouldn't close but it only closes when we click the drop down button we're gonna change that, and that's the last bit of JavaScript code. So what we wanna do is, outside of the document ready, when we want to do dollar document dot mouse up. So when the mouse has been released, I'm gonna put call a function. This is gonna take parameter of event. And now we're gonna check for a few different things. We're gonna check if the drop down menu ID isn't the event.target. Because we don't want this code to trigger if we click the drop down button. That's not what we want. It should be only when it's outside of the drop down button. No, no, sorry, my bad. We don't want it to trigger if we've clicked the drop down button because this bit of code is just going to be called 
anytime the mouse up is released anywhere on our sort of web page but this check will allow us to prevent us from doing anything if it's within the menu there's some more code and for this we're going to do if zero is equal to drop down menu dot id dot has event dot target dot length and again it's a very similar thing we're going to be checking both of these lines of code are used to check if it's within the drop down menu which we don't want and then there's a couple more checks that we need to do first one is we're going to do drop down button make sure that this isn't equal to the ID because otherwise it will mess up. We only want this to call if it's the outside of the menu but not the actual drop down button. And then finally, the last check is drop down menu ID dot width. As long as it's greater than 992, whatever the value is for your CSS, then it's okay. Because if anything less, we don't want the user to have to have tapped somewhere on the web page and that code and that sort of navigation menu disappears. That's the whole point of this tutorial: to make it like Khan Academy, so that navigation menu is always there, even on a smaller screen, especially on a smaller screen, I should say. And within here. All we do is drop down menu.id dot hide and that is it. So if we go back, refresh, click drop down, so good, click outside of it. As inside, it's, it doesn't do anything. Outside, it hides it. If I drop down, you got this drop down menu. So what we're going to do is go to the index.css and the last thing we're going to do is if we on the, on a smaller screen size, we don't want this drop down button to appear here. We just don't want it. So what we're going to do is put another media query. So we're going to put at media all and max dash width. I mean 991 pixels. And then we're going to put hash drop down menu, hash drop down button. Li, this is one of the first IDs, it might have been the first ID that we added. I'm going to put display none. So when it's on a smaller screen size, go back, refresh. As you can see, it doesn't appear now. And if we click outside of it, the menu doesn't disappear. If we go back, drop down, and if we click off it, drag down but there is a little problem because if we go back if we by default resize it the menu is always there if we click drop down then hide it it is by default in that it is now hidden so what we need to do is have a check for that we can do that within index.css so if it's a min width what we want to do I mean if it's a max width we want to do the opposite of this, we want to do, 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 do display block, not black block, refresh, that's all good. If I hide it now, that did not work. Okay, let me have a look at why that did not work. So if I right click, inspect element, if I go to body, the drop down, as you can see the drop down menu is there. If I go up, I 
uh, if we put quest exclamation mark important this will make sure it always appears so if I click drop down click off it as you can see it's always there regardless of what we did when we opened it like so which is really cool stuff so that is it really for a Khan Academy style drop down it's a pretty cool thing and there's actually a couple of tasks that I want you to do first of all if you let's say open it I resize it then I reopen it make it bigger as you can see that's pretty darn cool that's all pretty good but 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 if I open it like this it looks pretty nice doesn't it if I resize it it's on top of each other it there should be a slight gap between these two and if we resize it even further they are all four of them are on top of each other again there should be a slight gap so for you exactly just one task just just put some extra padding or margin or whatever you want some break lines just to style it a bit better and put some space around it so that's it for creating a Khan Academy style navigation menu this was actually created as a response to a request for some help that we had on our sonarlearning.co.uk community forum if you have any questions or requests feel free to post them we'll help we'll even make videos sometimes and if you want to check out the source code feel free to do that there'll be a link in the description to github if you like the video please give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment and as usual thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day